Liminal Archives, The School. Level classification, difficulty, one out of five. While the level poses some danger, any immediate necessities are easily supplied. However, more extraneous items must be sought with risk. Entity count, two out of five. While native entities are common, they can be easily avoided, and foreign entities are an unlikely encounter. Chaos Gradient, 1 out of 5. Beyond the occasional broken light and missing ceiling tile, the level is relatively stable bearing the occasional nonlinear hall. Bassett Frazier Index, 1.333 out of 5. This level is safe to get through, but living here is ill-advised due to limited occupied space. Description: The school is a high school building being separated into two floors. Wanderers will almost always enter on the lower floor. Anyone unfortunate enough to enter on the upper floor must find a staircase leading down as soon as possible. The school can be described as a rest level, functioning as a safe, habitable level, where one can stock up on food or water. Dangers and extra supplies may be found on the upper floor, but at the expense of the safety of the lower floor. Throughout both floors, water fountains can be found, which dispense fresh water. These fountains are completely safe to drink from, though it is possible that they may dispense carpet fluid or other anomalous substances. It is advised to test the fountains before drinking or collecting. Both floors of the school are dotted with security cameras. These cameras are on, indicated by a dim red light, and are never seen moving. It is unknown where and how these cameras are accessed. The school as a whole functions off of an internal day and night cycle. During the day, food is endlessly stocked with cafeteria twice a day. During the night, all lights will shut off, leaving the building in pitch black darkness, only being illuminated by the dim red glow of the security cameras. Other emergency lights or any personal light sources brought from other levels. The day-night cycle matches that of baseline reality, each phase lasting 12 hours. One full day in the school lasts 24 hours. The lower floor. The lower floor is in its space, containing office rooms, a small cafeteria, an auditorium, and various miscellaneous rooms. These include janitor closets, meeting rooms, and testing rooms. Wanderers will typically end up on this floor when entering the level, specifically next to the station security desk. Four distinct exit doors can be found near the corners of the building, though they are anonymously shield set and impossible to open or destroy. The floor is tiled with speckled white lines, and the walls are usually a pale beige color, occasionally being decorated with black and red wallpaper. The lower floor is primarily comprised of four hallways, connecting to make a rectangular area. Inside the rectangular area is a cafeteria and auditorium. The cafeteria contains a few rows of benches to sit on with accompanying tables. The food here is anonymously restocked twice a day. The food itself is quite subpar, being what you typically find in a public school. It is unknown where the food comes from, as the kitchen does not actually produce any food itself, but the appliances are a reliable source of warmth. The auditorium contains a large stage and a few hundred seats, ascending in height as you farther from the stage. For the most part, the auditorium is barren and empty. On the opposite sides of the floor are the office and the lounge. The office contains several office rooms and some tech in them, though a majority of the tech items found in these rooms are non-functional, especially the computers. The lounge contains sofas, various board games, and weight training machines. The upper floor. The upper floor can be accessed by going up one of the four stairwells found on the lower floor. The upper floor is an infinite labyrinth of hallways and classrooms, styled similarly to the lower floor, with speckled white tiles and pale beige walls occasionally decorated by red and black wallpaper. These hallways are sometimes now linear and can take up the same space without intersecting, or loop into entirely new areas. It may also be possible that backtracking will lead to a new layout, though this is not likely. The upper floor's classrooms contain several supplies. The classrooms themselves contain what you normally expect. Rows of desks, a board, shelves or cabinets, etc. Staircases can be found roughly every 300 meters that all lead back down to the lower floor. Inside some halls and classrooms, windows can be found. These windows are blinding and showcase nothing of the outside only a white blinding light. During the night, the windows are pitch black and show nothing but a black, empty void. The lower floor contains two major threats, the formal more drastic of the floor's magna cognitive effects on a person's mind. 
Being on the upper floor for an extended period of time will cause mental deterioration, similar to those experienced on the halls, but can sometimes be more severe. Most common effects include extreme emotions, thoughts of violence or suicide, functional and cognitive decline, and effects to your vision and hearing. You cannot directly die from these effects, but they may impede your ability to stay agile or alert while on this floor. Mental deterioration has been observed to accelerate considerably during the night. The other threat on this floor are the entities. Smilers have been sighted on this floor, however only during the night, and have been found mainly near or inside the deviant rooms, such as the rooms uh, missing ceiling tiles or rooms with destroyed or damaged floors. A native entity called students can be found roaming the halls during the day. Native Entities Students During the day, an entity native to the school named Students can be found wandering the halls. These entities are predatory and should not be faced alone. Students are deceptive and will appear like any normal person from a distance. Do not approach any figures in the distance if they are wearing a red shirt and black pants. This is the exact attire that all students wear. If you see a figure with this attire, exercise extreme caution. You will most likely spot a student before it spots you. An intentional tactic made by the students, leading you to believe that they are another wanderer. If by any chance a student spots you from far away, it will typically wave at you, always with its right arm. If this behavior is present, act like you have not seen the entity and try to slowly leave the area. It is unknown how intelligent these students are, but they are intelligent enough to disguise themselves as wanderers and try to act like them though their attempts are not perfect. When approached, students will begin to reveal their true appearance. Their limbs will grow to be gr grossly disproportionate. Their skin color will revert to a pale white reminiscent of a dead corpse. They will also lose any facial features, becoming faceless creatures, vaguely made to look humanoid. Some have been seen with entire extra limbs, or have existing limbs that split halfway. It is unknown what students do to their victims, as they lack any mouth, though they have been seen dragging away mauled bodies on the floor. It is unknown where they are taken. Strangely, blood is never found. Any blood present from an attack will mysteriously disappear. It is unknown how, as no researcher has been able to stay by the area long enough due to deterioration. Communities Special Procedure Guidance Movement the Special Procedure Guidance Movement, SPGM, is an organization found in the school. They are the only permanent human settlement on the level. Due to the limited size or lower floor, large-scale communities are not possible. The upper floor is impossible to live in due to its degrading properties. This organization is split into two sectors, the Deltoid Sector and the Asteroid Sector, each fulfilling a different role in the organization. The SPGM is made of wanderers who have since given up on their escape from the back rooms. They took the opportunity to settle down on this level and call it home, due to its extreme safety. Their goal is to help guide wanderers through on how to move and help provide supplies and hospitality to any wanderers who may need rest. This group originated as a small group of three close friends who happened to enter the back rooms together, but since then, the organization has grown. SPGM Deltoid Sector The Deltoid Sector has seven permanent members who never leave the first floor. At least one personnel is at stationed by the security desk to welcome new wanderers, but no more than two. Three more personnel are stationed by the cafeteria, looking over the food and providing it to oncoming wanderers. The last two are stationed by the stage in the auditorium, guarding the exits. SPGM Asteroid Sector The Asteroid Sector has six permanent members, totaling to 13 members in the entire organization. Across both sectors, the sector is made up of an expedition team and regularly make trips to the upper floor of the school to retrieve extra supplies for availability. This allows oncoming wanderers to collect a few supplies as they come in without having to make a journey upstairs. The asteroid sector rarely gets new members for their team as the occasional accident occurs. Some of the older members claim their expedition team was a lot larger. These older members are also researchers. They do a lot more than just search for supplies upstairs. They study the students. All known information on these entities are thanks to these veteran researchers of the asteroid sector. Access Entrances In the cavity, you must find a ladder that leads down into the school. You will come down from the first floor ceiling near the security desk. 
you may rarely be taken to the upper floor. Overcoming the hallucinations on any sector of the Paranoia Museum will lead to the school. Exits The backstage of the lower floor's auditorium is devoid of light. In order to leave the school, you must pass through curtains of the stage without a light source. Here, once you are fully enveloped by darkness of the backstage, you will be taken to your home. Alternatively, you may rarely phase through the doors found on the upper floor. Using this method during the day will take you to boundless retail. During the night, you will be taken to the darkness instead. <laughs>